Hey everybody, what's going on? Today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace these little drum cylinder pistons that go in your rear drums on the 2500 trucks and 3500 trucks specifically. Um, the 1500 trucks I think will probably be a similar process, but I don't think it's as tedious and annoying. But uh, I'm going to set up my camera on a tripod. I'm going to talk you through everything as I do it. I'm going to try to time lapse everything instead of skipping through and hopefully my battery will last long enough for that but we'll see what happens so guys of course first thing you're going to do uh, you're going to want to jack the truck up but make sure you crack your lug nuts loose before you do uh, that or you could set the parking brake which will hold the back wheels together but um, it's easier to just crack them while it's on the ground and then lift it up so i'm going to do that and i'll come back with the next step once we get that done All right, so a couple quick things to mention. Uh, first off, you never need to jack your truck up too terribly high. Um, I can't get my camera low enough with it in a stand like this, I don't think. There it is. Uh, you can see it's barely off the ground. That makes these tires a little bit easier to handle, uh, depending on what you're working with. Secondly, odds are, if yours is like mine and these tires haven't been removed in ages, um, you may want to rotate your tires and your wheels will probably feel like they're stuck on these spots right here. Uh, just work at it a little bit, it'll come off. Uh, so I'm going to work at mine, get the wheel off, we'll go to the next step. Um, also I'm sure you guys noticed when I got those lug nuts off, breaker bars, awesome to have, and impact drivers, awesome to have. But anyways, on to the next step. All right, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer now that I got the tire off. And tight up. There we go. So next what you're going to do is you're going to want to take these bolts out of your axles right here. Uh, this drum on these heavy duty trucks does not come off unless you pull the axle out. That being said, when you're done, don't forget to refill it with fluid. It's a good idea to just drain all of it out anyways and just do a quick flush. Secondly, um, have a bucket or something to catch all the fluid running out. Uh, that is if you care about the ground here. If you're doing it out in some dirt or whatever, it shouldn't matter. But you're going to drain some fluid when you pull the axle out. So make sure you have a bucket or something around to help you catch that. And I'm also going to put a tarp down just in case. Oh, and a breaker bar works really well for these too because these likely have not been pulled off often, if ever, on your truck. <music> Guys, if this is stuck on your truck, you can't get it off, lightly tap this front end of it with a hammer and it'll pop right off for you. Alright, now that you got that out and it's all drained up, uh, you can just wipe off what's left just on the outside of the drum right there with a little paper towel and then you're ready to pull the drum off. Um, the lugs are attached to the drum so you can just kind of pull on that ring right there and you should be able to get a good grip on that. Uh, just like with the other thing, if it doesn't come off super easy, first off make sure your parking brake is off. Your parking brake will hold that in place. Uh, secondly, if it's still stuck on there, just give it some light taps with a sturdy hammer and it should just come off. So I'm going to go turn my parking brake off 
and then I'm going to pull it off and then I'll show you guys the inside and where you need to go from there. Another good idea guys is to set down some paper towels where you're going to put this because there's going to be some uh, lubricant up in there that's going to drip all over the ground which is another reason I have a tarp here but it's still a smart idea to put down some old paper towels. Be careful not to beat on this section right here, because if you do that, uh, you may ruin your seal for your axle. You may leak some fluids, which will end up locking up your diff in the long run, and it'll just be in some, for some pretty expensive repairs. So make sure you hit on this outside part stuff that's all steel and doesn't need to be flat and machined like this is. Uh, this is the part I always forget. So, look up inside here, there's some things you got to take out. You can kind of see that. Let me let me grab my pliers and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So what we got to do is you see up in here, right right there is the end of a spring clamp that goes all the way around. So you got to pull that spring off. Right behind that is a little metal square. You can kind of see that's the key in this little keyway. You got to pull that out. It's super easy with a magnet. If it's not so easy, get some pliers. And then this ring back here will unscrew and unthread, and then this will just slide right off. That's what I always forget. So make sure you pull the spring off, then that key and out of the keyway, and then unthread this. Um, I'll try to get my camera set up and zoomed in so you guys can kind of see a little of what's going on. All right, so hopefully this isn't gonna to be too wobbly. I'll try to stay out of the camera as much as I can, but um, it's pretty much everything I explained. Take the clip out, spring clip, and then the key, and then unthread the last little, I guess, nut that's in there. And usually you can keep this stuff um, in the bucket where you drained all your grease to keep it nice and lubed up. However, um, my bucket went through some rain and it's got a mixture of that lubricant and some rain in there. So I'm just going to set mine on some clean paper towels and that should be fine for your application too. Which at the end, you could still just kind of clean them off anyways and then um, put more fluid back in and you'll be good to go. Don't lose these parts though, they're pretty important.
All right, now that I have that out, the drum will just slide off and it's a little bit heavy, so be careful, don't put your feet underneath it or anything. The bearings that are in there, there's two of them in the inside, they stay inside the drum when you pull this off, so don't try to get those out. Whoops, should have zoomed y'all out for that. Anyways, there's the drum off. Um, that's what the inside looks like if you're like me and you had really bad brake fluid leaks and then it collected dust and dirt. Um, it should not be as black as this. I'm sure you guys should know that. But I'll still show you all the things to take out. Um, and the piece we're looking to get to is right there. That's the piece that usually leaks because of the brackets that it pushes up against. It's just a bad design by GM. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. So first off, um, there's just a bunch of bunch of little springs in here that you're gonna have to mess with. So first I take this one off. You can grab it with some pliers. Kind of bend it forwards. Uh, mine are kind of stuck together because they're real nasty. Oh man, they're real nasty. Uh, but you'll take the spring out and then pull this piece out and keep track of what spring goes where. It's going to be a pain if you mess these up, um, but they're all color coded to help you out. Uh, this one down here, man, that stuff's not even scraping off. This one down here, it's kind of its own unique shape. Um, it's got this long piece on the end of it, so you shouldn't mess that up. This one up here is blue, and this one over here is red, or orange. They're supposed to be anyways. So those will help you keep things straight. Jesus, this is really stuck on there. Uh, but you'll pull this off, this off, these side springs, this top spring, or this one, and then it'll all come apart. You'll be able to get into this. There we go. So we got that off. This has a hook at each end. This is supposed to be longer. I don't know why this one's cut off, but it's got a hook at each end. Make a pile right there on the tarp. Man, this thing is stuck. But this piece right here is what adjusts uh, your pads, your brake shoes. So once you, when you're wearing these down more and more, this will automatically um, unthread itself right here and spread apart so that these stay as close to this as they need to. Um, as close to the drum as they need to. Sorry, it's probably off camera. Um, but that's what this piece does, but it just has a hook at each end, like two little finger forks, and you should be able to pull that out. But I may need to get these springs next, so what they are, is push in and twist. The spring and the center piece comes through a little hole. Just like that. Um, you can reach the center piece. Let me clean it off a little bit. You can reach this piece from behind. Um, it's just got a little circle end at the end of it. It has a little arrowhead tip. And that just goes through the center of the spring. And these tips do come off. The springs should also come off. Uh, be careful just not to lose anything. But you'll do the same on both sides. And then that'll give you a little bit more motion. That's not supposed to come apart.
So there you can see how that comes out. Then you pull this little piece out of the cylinder. Do the same for that spring. But if you're struggling with it, don't get too irritated. Don't try to break it. Um, you'll regret it in the long run. This one you don't have to take off the truck to get all to all this stuff. Um, this one also has your parking brake cable on it right here. So it'll be a little more difficult to get off the truck, but I figured with the other side you don't have to, um, which worked out well. So next up we're going to take this off, which is has two bolts on the back. Here, let me go get the other one real quick. Let's see, here's the new one. It's got these two bolts that are on the back. Whoops. Yeah, this way. Two bolts that are on the back, and then this is where your brake line threads in. Um, if your brake line breaks, don't worry about it. They're very, very cheap at AutoZone O'Reilly. I got a pair for my back end for about $10. So, that's the next step. Oh, and it's really crappy, because you got to work through this small little gap between the drum plate and your leaf springs, but it's pretty self-explanatory where that is. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shut off the camera for this part, um, just to get the bolts out. But real quick, before I do. The reason these fail and start leaking the way they do is because of this bracket design right here. Um, this piece on your cylinder is rubber and this piece right here is steel and when this pushes into this enough times it eventually wears through and cracks this rubber which causes leaks on both sides. Um, so that's where your failure is probably going to be if you have leaky rear brakes. Um, it'll eventually get to the point where your brakes do not hold pressure at all. So if you start noticing brake fade and you start seeing leaking out the bottom of your drum right here, get it replaced pretty quickly. Um, otherwise you may find yourself without brakes. But I'm gonna pull this off and then I'll come back. Alright guys, I got the old cylinder off and I got the new one in. Uh, you can see right up there. Um, so I'm going to put all this back together. It's basically just the reverse of what you just did. Um, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen. Be very careful not to forget any parts. Uh, you'll regret it when you get everything else back on. go that's the brakes completely reassembled the colors are back on the correct side uh, the easy things to forget are this spring here these little rods on both sides and this rod down here make sure it's all assembled correctly uh, these springs as you guys probably saw are kind of a pain to do on your own but it's not incredibly terrible but now that this is all back together, um, I'm going to start putting the drums back on, screw them back down with these pieces that you saved from earlier, and then we'll have to go refill the diff, and then bleed the brakes, and then we're good to go.
guys, if this stuff doesn't go on incredibly easy, uh, don't try to force it. There's probably something that messed up or in there. Uh, but this goes on super, super easy, as you guys saw. You just have to line it up correctly. Um, so just beware of that. And make sure on the top you get a square hole lined up with your keyway once you get it all tightened down so that um, you can put your key back in there and put the clip back on and then put the axle back in. And guys, as you put this back in, where you touched it, you need to wipe off. Uh, that way you don't get any dirt down into your axles or into your... Oops. Oh, you don't get any dirt up into your diff or into any of your gears or anything because any little grinding at all could cause something to fail. And you're re-lubing all this anyways since you took it out. So you might as well keep it clean. Let's do some preventative maintenance. Guys, that's really all there is to it. Um, I still need to go run up to my auto parts store and get some more diff fluid so I can refill that, get all that lubed up. Um, it's a good idea after you drive for a little bit to retorque all your bolts, especially your lug nuts, and um, you can recheck all of your axle bolts, which is really easy with these trucks because you just take the hubs off um, or the yeah, that's what they are. The the little center caps on your wheels, you just take the hubcaps, that's what they are. Uh, you just take those off and you'll see the bolts right away um, as you guys saw earlier in the video. But anyways, hopefully this is helpful. Thanks guys for watching. Um, I should have some more stuff coming up soon with the lift pump so I can get it all finished up. And after that, I'm not sure what we're doing, but we'll figure it out together. See you in the next one.